Hello. This is for the Zoom meeting. This is for the Zoom. Ah, okay. So I can yeah. two. Yeah. There's no interference between that. Here? Yeah. 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 Oh, oh. The speaker was speaker Yeah. Did it? Did it? Okay. Can can we remove here? This here. Not okay. I would not. So I am a member for two years. Ever since we have been working on the main situation, I was a technical committee chair. That time it was the president of right in a episode we know each other. And uh, during the time we were organizing the man, he was also the So it's my pleasure to welcome him. So Professor Manuel has been a professor of research in the Spanish Council for Research uh, since 1996. So since then, we have been uh, involved in the research on magnetism of nano and micro wires. So he has supervised 36 PhD students and members of the with the scientists. 
He is a co-author of the 600 uh, publications and 50 patents. And Professor Manuel Patel is PhD from uh, Complutense University of Madrid, and he was a member of the postdoctoral fellow at Max Planck Institute for Metallurgy in Denmark. Uh, also at the Technical University of Denmark. Um, he was uh, the founding chair of the IT Bank Society in Spain. And uh, he was, as I mentioned, was the chair of the I mean, president of IT Bank Society. And he was also chair of the Internet Conference in 2008, chair of the Internet Conference. Without further ado, let me introduce him. Yes. Thank you very much, friend, for the for the introduction. It is mm, my pleasure to be here again in Singapore after the first time was during the Intermark you organized in 2017, 18. 18. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, something is. It's not. Not working. Okay, I think it's all right now. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, I, I will be talking about uh, cylindrical macro and nano wires. I emphasize uh, the word cylindrical because, well, as many of you know, the, the many times the, the you are talking about uh, nano wires. Many times it's nano stripes. In, in my case, it's always cylindrical shape, and in fact. Uh, we are profiting of this cylindrical shape for some uh, uh, more or less uh, fundamental studies, but also applications. But first of all, let me, I have my, the duty being distinguished lecturer this year, the duty of, of making some publicity of the society. Although I, I think you know very well because we are in the uh, uh, meeting of the, of the Sing Singapore chapter. So I, I don't think I have to make much uh, uh, announcement. But just I, I, what I would like to mention is that it is very important this uh, the education, the, the, for particularly for, for student PhD students to uh, uh, join, uh, to attend the, the, the summer school. As you see, every year it is organized in, in Europe, America, and Asia. This year was in Italy, next year will be in Asia, in Taiwan, as far as I know. So please, if you are not yet members of the society, you can join uh, the Magnetic Society. <laughs> this is a summary of my presentation. I will be talking about mainly two families of magnetic cylindrical wires. First, uh, uh, those wires having a, a mm, diameter in the range of, of a micrometer. Uh, I will summarize some of the main points we have been doing in, in, in these micro wires from fabrication to magnetic characterization. And also I will give you some of applications making use of these micro wires. Something similar, I will go later to the nano wires. We, I will introduce the, the way how we prepare in our laboratory these nano wires and some uh, uh, as, uh, magnetization characterization of these nano wires, and particularly paying attention in, in the in the last uh, works we have been doing in the last six uh, five six years on on individual cylindrical nano wires with a diameter in the range from twenty to two hundred nanometers, uh, and as they, they are two families of different way, different materials, I I am trying to. Doing this presentation, looking for I'm looking for a, a light motif to unify the presentation. So uh, I will pay particular attention on which is the role played by the cylindrical geometry and the, the different types of magnetic anisotropies they uh, are present in these uh, wires to determine which is the domain structure and the magnetization process on both families of of, of cylindrical wires. Looking for and at the end, we are looking for applications of these of these uh, wires. So this is a, a a photo of the laboratory in Madrid uh, for the fabrication of the of the macro wires. Oh, I don't know why. So 
uh, this uh, is a ultra rapid solidification processes to prepare amorphous microwaves. Uh, there are two families. Well, in fact, we have three machines to prepare these uh, materials. One is for, for ribbons that we for, forget. And uh, we have two families of amorphous wires, the so called in water and rotating water quenching technique, by which we obtain amorphous wires in the range of 100 micrometers in diameter. The other family is so called glass coated amorphous micro wires that consist of a, a nucleus, which is a structurally yeah. amorphous, ferromagnetic metallic, uh, and it is coated by, by a, 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 a coat of, of pyrex. So these pyrex insulates the material from the corrosion point of view, from electrical point of view, and also introduces strong mechanical stresses. Uh, I have two videos for, for the preparation of these families of amorphous microwaves, but I will show you only this, the, the second one. But in both cases, I, I would like to emphasize that it is very important the, the, magneto, the, the, the alloy composition because it determines the magnetostriction constant of the, of the alloy. So there are two examples, There's iron, silicon, boron, which high and positive large magnetostriction, and those cobalt, iron, uh, base microwave with high containing cobalt, with very, very small value of, of the magnetic structure. And the magnetic properties of these wires are determined by this alloy composition. So let me go to the, to the video. Okay, you see, there is a, the, a, a Pyrex tube in the uh, inside, we have a polycrystalline uh, mm, alloy of the of the uh, sample iron silicon boron. We heat with the induction coil. We heat the the metallic mother alloy until it gets very viscous at around twelve hundred degrees centigrade. And then we have a, a water jet to increase the the solidification process. And also we, we need a very skilled person. So drawing down the, the, the material. So, but finally we get in a continuous way, this uh, amorphous microwaves uh, in the order of 400 meters per second. And so you see there uh, 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 an image of the, of the microwave. There is a core, which is metallic ferromagnetic amorphous, and it's coated by the pyrex. The pyrex is the is the, material, the tube that we had at the beginning. So in the in the process of fabrication, we obtain this glass coated microwire. Okay. And during this process, I put here some. Uh, the, the mechanical stresses are very, very strong because this quenching process. There is, so to summarize just the very general characteristics of these microwaves. So for those microwaves with high uh, iron base, with high magnetostriction, we have the so-called bistable magnetic behavior by which the hysteresis loop is perfectly square. It is practically impossible to get an experimental point in, in this large Bachhausen jump. And this is interpreted considering that we, in, the, in a positive uh, remanence, we have nearly a single domain, but at the very end where we have uh, some density of magnetic charges, when we reach a critical value of the switching field, a domain wall depends from one end and moves very fast to the other end. And we have finally the, the opposite the uh, stable behavior, a stable state. In the case of uh, non magnetostrictive um, alloys, they are characterized by the so-called giant magnet impedance effect, which is based in, in the classical uh, skin effect, by which the impedance, the real and imaginary component of impedance, decreases drastically when we place this uh, microwire in a, in a position where we have a static magnetic field or when we apply the mechanical stress. So this, uh, <clears throat> this uh, effect is very uh, interesting for application in sensor, sensor devices. 
And, and I would like to emphasize here, I should uh, put it here, that's a very recent results, not yet published. I'm plotting here the, the relative change in length as a function of the, um, uh, the magnetic field for a composition cobalt 94 iron 6, then silicon boron. So you see the saturation value of the magnetostriction is four times 10 to the minus eight, which is really very, very small. It's in the limit of, of, uh, of measurement. So there is no smaller quantification of these values. But uh, I, I would like to, to emphasize that if we change 1% of in the composition of iron and cobalt, uh, so here the magnetostriction is positive. So it means that when on the applied field, it enlarges a little bit. But if we change uh, so just one percent in the composition, we get negative value for the magnetostriction. Also very small, not so small, not so small as here. But and, and I would like to under underline that it is possible to tune this magnetostriction value, just changing very, very little the, the alloy composition. Okay. Uh, concerning the experimental characterization of these microwaves, in principle, it is 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 uh, simple. In principle, there are many tricks, but uh, I, I want to to simplify the description. So you see here we have a, a solenoid generating the axial magnetic field. Inside the solenoid, we place a number of pickup coils, secondary coils, and then inside the pick up, the pickup coils we have the micro wire. So you see schematically here. So if if we know which is the distance in, uh, for example, one centimeter between two pickup coils. When the, the domain wall that I mentioned before is crossing the, the, the micro wire, we can get the distance in time and so determining which is the velocity of this propagating domain wall. This is an experiment, an example for a particular micro wire. So we have a linear behavior between the velocity of the domain wall as a function of the applied field after some transient behavior at the beginning. So we studied uh, years ago the. <coughs> the damping mechanisms using the uh, general equation of motion of the domain wall. And we were able to determine which are the different uh, damping mechanisms trying to stop the, the motion of the, uh, of, to damp the motion of the domain wall. Uh, allow me to, I would like to show you two very, very simple examples, uh, but with, uh, in my opinion, interesting outcome. So we have here, it's very simple. We have the solenoid generating the, the horizontal field. We have two pickup coils, the green ones, in the symmetrically placed in the ends of, of the of the micro wire. And we have also an additional local field coil in the center of the main solenoid. So this local field coil generates a magnetic local field which opposes the, the driving field generated by the solenoid. And also very important, the magnetic microwire is asymmetrically placed. You see one end of the microwire is outside the solenoid and the other is inside. With this, we are ensuring that this uh, uh, domain wall, I mentioned before, is nucleated in this end and propagated to the right, okay? So you see, the, and as an example, here is a, a schematic view of the domain wall propagating between two uh, domains during the, the propagation. And this particular case is for a domain wall, is a head-to-head -head domain wall. Uh, then uh, I'm plotting here the velocity of the propagating wall as a function of the local field in the, in the, in the center of, of the solenoid for a particular value of the driving field. So for 170 amperes per meter, the field generated by the solenoid, we increase the value of the local field, and we see that the velocity of the domain wall decreases, and finally it is stopped in a, in a particular position. So we can control not only the, the velocity of this uh, domain wall, but also to stop it in, in, a, in a particular position, playing so with, uh, with the different values of the main field and the local field. So this is very important because we have actually a, a metastable uh, wall, so the wall wants to go to one end of the, of the micro wire because it's energetically more favorable. <clears throat> also, another example in this case, we do not have this local coil in the center of the solenoid, but we see here the velocity of the domain wall as a function of the driving field. You see, 
uh, two behaviors with linear behavior. Uh, here, the velocity of the domain well is larger than before. But we see that an asymmetry. When we apply the field to the right or to the left, we have different values of the velocity. In, in both cases, the domain wall is propagating from the left to the right because the wire is asymmetrically placed. But which is the origin for this asymmetric velocity? When we apply the field in one direction or the other, which, why it is the velocity different? Well, we, we develop and we have um, uh, proceeded with a, with a um, a schematic, well, we, I, we are using this uh, schematic view. We have the micro wire, and here we consider a parabolic domain wall during the, its propagation. <clears throat> this is a head to head domain wall. In fact, this is not to the scale. Actually, the length of the domain wall is much larger than the diameter of the micro wire, but just for, for to see it uh, more clearly. So <clears throat> we have a head to head domain wall. And we we uh, we study the magnetization dynamics using the lambda elastic Gilbert equation, which is as this uh, general expression where we have to consider all three components of the magnetic moments inside the domain wall: the circular, the radial, and the axial components. So we have these equations. I'm not going into detail, but I would like to emphasize that when we are dealing with a head-to-head -head or a tail-to-tail -tail dom domain walls, the velocity we obtain has different values. So this uh, velocity of the domain wall, plus and minus this expression, so is proportional to the square values of the radial and azimuthal components of the magnetic moments in the, in, the, in the domain wall. So at least, although I can tell you that the quantitative fitting to the experimental values of the domain wall is not, the fitting is not perfect, but we can, we can say that this different, this asymmetry in the domain wall propagation is due to the different character of the domain wall, head to head or uh, tail to tail. Ah, let me go now. Uh, actually, we have done many more uh, characterizations of the microwaves, but I, I'm going now to the application of these microwaves. I, I'm going to give you some examples. For example, this is. And this is a, a magnetoelastic pen. So this pen is, is a in principle a, a normal pen. We have in the axis of we we have a micro wire, which is connected to a spring. Then at the back the, we, we have some cables connecting the wire. So when we are writing, we are signing, for example, we are making a, a mechanical stress. The micro wire. So because so as we apply the, uh, this mechanical stress, the magnetic response of the, of the, of the micro wire is a function of this mechanical stress. So what we get typically is something like that. We have uh, a voltage as a function of time characterized by a number of peaks. So when we do sign, we are making a number of uh, pressing. So it's, uh, this uh, magnetic signature is characterized by the number of peaks and the trend of these peaks. I have to say it is not the intensity of the peaks or the total duration of, of the magnetic signature. Because if you are in a moment that you are very strong, so you, you sign with a much more strength, uh, stress. So the, the signature, magnetic signature can change. Okay. And what is important, as I mentioned, is characterized uh, each person is the, the number of peaks and the trend of these peaks. First up, down, down, up, and so on. Okay. Uh, another uh, application with these families of, of microwires, we prepare what we call multi layer bimagnetic microwires. So we started with this glass, glass coated microwire. We spattered a gold nanolayer, the external uh, part of the microwire, and then we spattered a, mag a, spatter a magnetic layer at the external, external part. So a cross section of this B magnetic wire is something like that. We have the, the internal uh, amorphous core, the insulating pyrex, and then the external cell, which is of a second magnetic material. So this uh, second material can be soft or hard. And we can play with the soft hard 
behaviors of the internal and external uh, layers. Just uh, oh, we, we have developed uh, several patents and applications with these beam magnetic microwaves. I would like just to mention the, the um, a, a temperature sensor or, or using these microwaves for, for a sensing element for, for, for a thermometer. But this is, well, you see here, we have our beam magnetic wire. So in this case, the external layer is magnetically hard or at least much harder than the internal core. So first we have magnetized to saturation this hard uh, cell, the, well, both hard and, and soft. And then this external cell, it, it is in the remanent, in a, a, applies a, a vertical field to the up direction in the internal soft core. So if we apply that, uh, uh, a uh, sorry, uh, electrical current through the internal core, so the magnetization will rotate certain angle. But with the, with the current, we are also increasing the temperature of the core. And this angle deviating from the axial direction uh, is proportional of the temperature. So we can uh, measure this uh, temperature through the, for example, th through the inductance. So you, you see here the, the relative value of the induct inductance as a function of the temperature, which, uh, well, we were in, in this project, we were interested in the region in, for the human body, 30, 35 to 42, 45. We found a practically linear behavior. And what is interesting in this particular sensor is that the response is very, very fast. And here you, you see an example of the breath and monitoring. So if we place one of these microwaves in the, in the, below the, the nose, when we are inspiring or expiring, the temperature of the air is different. So it's, it's a high temperature when you expire. So and this is the evolution of the, of the inspiring, expiring, and so on. So we can follow the, we can monitor the breathing. <clears throat> okay. So, a very recent application in collaboration with, with a, a group in Dresden has been using four of these microwires, glass coated microwires with high magnet restriction. So each uh, microwire has a small coil, so saturating the, the magnetization inside the, the microwire. So we have kind of four different uh, four uh, magnet dipoles. And the idea is to have a, a large gradient or control the field in a very local position. So and depending how we uh, make the connections in the coils of uh, with these coils, we are, uh, we are defining the direction of the magnetization in, in each nanowire, ma uh, microwire. So it is possible to get a quadrupole uh, configuration or a biaxial configuration for these magnets. Okay, uh, but other applications, for example, they in collaboration with different groups and companies, we have been using these uh, microwires for flush gates, very sensitive magnetic field sensors. Also, this te this technique of fabrication, the rapid solidification, has been used to prepare uh, novel families of uh, uh, well, hard microwires. For example, manganese bismuth. So in this you see this behavior, the coercivity as a function of temperature increases with temperature, the coercivity. This is completely unusual. Normally, coercivity decreases with temperature. It is related to the anisotropy of the material. And uh, although the value of coercivity is not very large, what is important is that the uh, uh, high temperature, when the neodymium ion boron uh, decreases the coercivity and, and is no more so reliable for applications, some other alternative uh, uh, alloys can replace. This is not particularly the case yet, but uh, this is the, the trend. Also, we, we were able to fabricate a super elastic uh, nickel manganese gallium uh, microwires with a high uh, safe, memo uh, safe memory alloys. <laughs> and and I, I would like to mention this is the last experiment I have been involved personally was last year with Laura 
Laura Lewis in, in Northeastern University in Boston. So they were interested in the, they have observed previously that the, the neurons, the damaged neurons, uh, grew faster when they were located in the presence of uh, static magnetic field created by neodymium and boron magnets, for example. Well, uh, uh, I was there with my microwaves and uh, putting the microwave in contact with the neuron and, and applying a, a, a static field, we observed that the, the, the growth of the neuron is even larger when we have this magnetic wire or magnetic wire. So it is not yet clear what is the origin for this effect. Probably it is related to the very local uh, straight fields generated by the microwire at the ends. Mm. Also, it's an influence probably of the elongated uh, shape of the microwire. But the, the, the origin is, is not yet well understood. OK, let, let me go now to the nanowires. It is moving. I would like to, to start saying that, of course, you know all the nanotechnology is based on two dimension uh, nanostructure, thin films, multilayers, et cetera. But there is an increasing interest in, in number of laboratories to, to, to see which is the effect of uh, making nanost uh, magnetic nanostructure with, with some uh, curvature. For example, you see a, a membrane, flexible membrane, if you can roll up this uh, membrane, or in the case of uh, nanohelix, or in the case of nanotubes or, or nanowires. So new phenomena, new materials, and new applications appear as a consequence of this curvature. Uh, in the case of nanowires, we are working in Madrid. I would like to mention some there, there has been a number of theoretical uh, works previously, but for example, uh, in this uh, work by Ricardo Hertel, where he saw that uh, there is a curvature induced magnetochirality. You see, this is a nanowire with a, a propagating domain wall with a given chirality. In this order here, the chirality is the opposite. So he predicted that the domain wall velocity would be different. Con uh, uh, depending on which is the chirality. Also, in in these uh, cylindrical nanowires, the presence of vortex is uh, favored by by the cylindrical shape of the of the nanowires. So you know the vortices, the magnetic moments are circumferentially oriented, but at the very axis where the magnetic moment has to be uh, perpendicular. To the plane of the, of the vortex because of exchange uh, energy requirements. <clears throat> also, a more complicated uh, structure is the skirmions. That there was the first talk this morning was discussed the presence of different types of skirmions. And in the case of our nanowires, where we, uh, it is predicted that we ha will have a skirmion tube. So the skirmion will extend along a third direction. Okay, it's no more a, a dot, but a dot extended in the cylindrical third direction. Also, uh, I would like to mention that mm, in, in the, because of the cylindrical symmetry in the axis of the, of the nanowire, we, we can have what is called a block point domain wall. It is energetically it's unfavorable, but it, it is a solution from energetic point of view during the proper, the, the magnetization reversal process. And the presence, of the very existence of this block point wall is related to this uh, a mathematical singularity in the axis of the, of the wire. So uh, we have been working with these um, cylindrical nanowires all 15 years, something like that. Uh, and, and we prepare these uh, nanowires by electrodeposition, electrochemical route. First, we prepare a, a template, a porous uh, template, for example, a nodic alumina, a nodic alumina template. And then, one, once we have these uh, holes in the in the membrane, 
we fill the, the holes, the nanopores, with a, a metallic ferromagnetic material, element or alloys. And <clears throat> this is really a less expensive technique, and we are able to get reproducible, uh, reliable results in the, in the uh, magnetic properties of the cylindrical nanowires. Uh, the diameter we can control in the laboratory, the, the diameter of the nanowires roughly between 15 to 20 nanometers up to 400 nanometers, and the length can be up to 50 microns. So really, the length of the wires can be very, very large compared to the, to the diameter. OK, very roughly, so I explained how we prepare this nanowire. We start with an uh, aluminum foil, very high purity, five nines at least. It's one inch in diameter, roughly. And uh, by two anodization processes, we get a, a porous membrane, which is open by both sides, in the upper and, and the bottom. Then we spatter a tiny layer of gold in the bottom. And then by electrodeposition, this uh, gold layer serves uh, as an electrode for the electrodeposition. So we fill the material with nanowires, like that. Here you see a, a, a picture, an image of this, an array of such a, well, in this particular case, cobalt nanowires. But in, in the very, uh, in the last years, as I mentioned before, we are interested in the uh, study of individual nanowires. Then chemically, we remove the alumina, also the gold, and we get um, millions of these uh, nanowires uh, on, on our surface. Then it is, it is a very tedious work, but by we put the nanowires in, in a ethanol, and then by centrifugation, we separate them. And then uh, we take a drop of, in the center of, of this uh, sample holder, and we start again with the centrifugation. And finally, we are able to isolate and to observe individual nanowires. We are particularly interested in the study of these individual nanowires I mentioned. <clears throat> and, and we can fabricate in Madrid several families of these nanowires. For example, of course, those having uh, homogeneous diameter and homogeneous composition, but also we can fabricate modulated nanowires. For example, with modulations in composition, this here you see modulated along the, the length. This is a cobalt copper. Uh, multi-layer nanowires. The modulation can be also in the radial direction, for example, having uh, a nanotube or core cell nanowires, but also modulations in diameter. So you see this here, individual nanowire with segments, with different alternative segments of, of different diameter. Uh, also, this uh, electrochemical route has been uh, used by in, in collaboration with different groups to fabricate, for example, magnetopolymers. This is an example where we have nickel nanowires uh, in polyesterine nanotubes. Also, we have been able to fabricate a large scale uh, nanopattern stru structure by soft lithography imprint plus electrodeposition. Or also in another type of work with other group, uh, we have prepared highly ordered plasmonic gallium nanoparticles in these uh, alumina membranes and the upper part of the membranes. Uh, in general, these nanowires, the applications are still not so much developed as in the case of microwaves, but they are very interesting applications. For example, these nanowires can be used as a, a source of very local magnetic field, or also to, to detect uh, magnetic fields, for example, uh, steps of ma in magnetic force microscopy. Also, uh, in, uh, in oncology applications, in a similar, relatively similar way as nanoparticles. Also, um, in data storage, so some multilayer nanowires present an interesting giant magnetic resistance uh, properties, or also very recently has been proposed for spin electronics and thermomagnetic applications or ferromagnetic resonance based sensing applications. Uh, 
In a particular case, we in, in a European project, we developed uh, uh, the origin, the, the our objective was to prepare nanowire arrays magnets without uh, rather free uh, nanowire array magnets. We, we consider iron cobalt nanowires with the largest saturation magnetization of 2.2, 2.3 Tesla. Uh, of course, we were able to increase to get some nice results, but of course not comparable to the best uh, uh, permanent magnets. Also, we were able to fabricate uh, nickel segments uh, of nanowires, like, like uh, elongated nanoparticles that were shown to be very, uh, very suitable for uh, magnetic resonance imaging contrast agent, or also to fabricate uh, core cell nanowires, iron magnetite core cell nanowires for some biomedical applications. But let me show you, uh, once we prepare the array of nanowires, this is a magnetic force microscopy image at the remanence. You see black and white points, each one corresponds to, to individual nanowires. Black and white means that magnetization is pointing up or down. And let me show you what happened with when we applied a, a magnetic field. So you see there are some uh, white points that become black, indicating that individual nanowires are reversing magnetization individually. In fact, we can determine which is the fractional magnetization of the nanowire array just by counting how many wires are black or white. And we can compare with these red points in the uh, stellar loop in the middle, red points correspond to the, to the data obtained with this magnetic resonance, uh, ma uh, magnetic force microscopy images which are compared to the to the black points in a, a squid magnetometer. Okay. Well, this is a, a also in the remanence in, when we have a much larger area of, of, of the membrane, you see this labyrinthic structure is determined by the magnetostatic interactions between the nanowires because they are very close. So of course there is no exchange coupling but only magnetostatic interactions. <clears throat> now, uh, from now on, I'm going to talk only on individual nanowires. This is, uh, for example, uh, first characterization of the crystalline structure. It's very important the magnetocrystalline anisotropy of these nanowires. This corresponds to uh, 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 iron cobalt nanowire, which is cubic in, in, in Latin, its lattice is, is cubic. This other case corresponds to a cobalt nanowire, which is hexagonal. So I would like to emphasize that the magnetocrystalline isotropy of hexagonal wires is much stronger than, than the cubic magnetocrystalline anisotropy. In fact, the, the, simply the shape anisotropy of the individual nanowires is typically much uh, larger than the, the magnetocrystalline anisotropy of the cubic. So only when we have a hexagonal lattice, the magnetocrystalline anisotropy competes with the shape anisotropy. <laughs> Let me show you, so I'm going to consider these uh, cobalt nickel alloy nanowires, all, always individual nanowires. First, I start with a cobalt 35 nickel 65 nanowire, which is cubic. So the cubic anisotropy, magnetocrystal anisotropy, is overcome by, by the shape anisotropy. So you see here in the remanence uh, a magnetic force microscopy image of an individual nanowire. So you see there are two uh, uh, black and white constraint, con uh, contrast at the very end. So we are dealing really with a magnetic dipole. This, uh, uh, individual nanowire can be considered as an individual, uh, as a, a magnetic dipole. Here you see the, the hysteresis loop. The experimental one is the noise one, uh, obtained by magnetic, uh, magnetic care effect. And you see this is, you, you realize that here that we have a large Backhausen jump 
similar to the case of the those uh, magnetostrictive microwaves. And, and the magnetization reverses essentially through a block point domain wall, as I mentioned before, moves very fast. But what happens when we increase the content of cobalt? For example, in, in this case, cobalt 65, nickel 35, or cobalt 85, nickel 15. In this case, we, we observe we, that we have a hexagonal lattice symmetry for the crystal. So it is completely different, the, the type of, of uh, uh, domain uh, structure that we observe. And to, to determine which is really the, the domain structure, we have been using synchrotron uh, experiments, particularly in Barcelona, in Spain, on the photoemission electron microscopy with X-ray circular magnetic uh, decreation. And, and we, here we are profiting of the uh, cylindrical shape of the nanowires. So you see there is the incident rays, X-rays, part of them are reflected, these reflected uh, uh, emitted uh, rays give us information of the surface of the, of the cylindrical nanowire. But part of these X-rays are transmitted through the wire. So we get information of the uh, internal configuration of magnetic moments inside this, in the, this cylinder. So <clears throat> we have two signals, what we call wire and shadow. The wire is the, the surface and the shadow is the internal part. So for example, for this uh, composition, we get very, very peculiar domain structure. Uh, here we have a multi-domain structure where the domains are transversely oriented. You see, not, not only in the, in the external part, but also inside the nanowire. But here we have a completely different contrast. You see here in the interpretation of this contrast is that we are dealing with a magnetic vortex. We have here two vortices with different opposite chirality. So, but we can observe experimentally this uh, configuration of magnetic moments inside the, mag the nanowire, which I wanted to emphasize. Uh, <clears throat> even more in collaboration with a, with a group in Toulouse, Etienne Snook, uh, performed electron holography measurements, and we can correlate this exotic domain structure where we have uh, vortices and transverse domains in a perpendicular direction to the axis to the axis of the of the of the nanowire, and this uh, this exotic uh, configuration corresponds to the local region where we have a hexagonal lattice uh, for the nanowire. Where when we have a cubic anisotropy, we have axial domains. So this this is in the hexagonal, and this here to the right would be the the axial. Uh, and cubic uh, crystal. <laughs> Let's go now to the periodically modulated nanowires. So I would particularly consider this type of, of uh, modulations. And the objective of all these modulations is to control somehow the reversal process of magnetization. First, uh, this is an electron holography image also obtained in, 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 in collaboration with Toulouse. I like very much this this uh, this colorful image. You see, this is the, a tiny diameter segment, and we have a number of colors and a number of arrows. So we are actually observing the stray fields outside the nanowire. Okay. So in the transition of diameter here, we have accumulated positive charges and here negative charges. So we are observing the lines of the magnetic field or the induction field outside the nanowire. Same here for, for the other uh, larger diameter and here for a number of, of uh, modulations. <laughs> we have done some uh, micromagnetic simulations uh, about these uh, modulated nanowires with different alternating uh, length uh, diameter. So, and we have classified the the, the mechanisms of reversal like as weak pinning and corkscrew pinning. The weak pinning is that when the mm, difference in diameters from the thick and thin segments is not very large. 
For example, when the thin is 100 and the thick is 130, we have weak pinning. The, the reversal is very weakly pinned. But when this, when the, the difference in, in diameter is very, is very significant, for example, from 130 to 60 or 40, we, we observe a, a corkscrew pinning. And we call it corkscrew pinning because uh, if we, and this is uh, simulation, we will have in the, in the, in the thick segments, we observe kind of voltage or schemion tubes where the axis of the schemion is not in the axis of the wire, but it moves in a helical path, something like that. And that's why we call it a coarse screw pinning mechanism. Let me go finally to the, to the case of co uh, compositional modulations so in nanowires. We have two types of modulations, ferromagnetic, ferromagnetic, where we are looking for segments with different magneton crystalline isotropy, cubic and hexagonal. And the other type of modulations in composition, in composition are ferromagnetic and metal, not ferromagnetic. Let me show you some examples of what we obtain. For example, this is a, a, a cobalt 85 nickel 15 nickel multi-segmented nanowire. The cobalt 80, 85 nickel 15 is hexagonal, while the nickel is, is uh, axial. So you have here a, a topological image. The segments are very well differentiated, the cobalt nickel and nickel, so on. And here you see the, the ferromagnetic image. We have the cobalt nickel, we have in this particular segment, two vortices with different, with opposite chirality. Here in the, in the nickel segment, we have axial magnetization and so on. In the cobalt nickel segment, we have transverse or vortex orientation, while in the nickel with a cubic and isotropy, we have axial orientation of the magnetization. Well, we have done also some uh, uh, micromagnetic uh, simulations, and we see that it is very important the, local, the direction of the magnetization in each uh, nickel segment because it determines which is the, the direction of a, of a core magnetization, the next uh, vortex of the cobalt nickel. Well, even more uh, in this type of, of, uh, of uh, nanowires, uh, multi-segmented nanowires, cobalt 85, nickel 15, nickel. So the last experiments we have been able to do is with a transmission X-ray microscopy also in the in the synchrotron, and where we can you see it's cobalt nickel, nickel, cobalt nickel. Here we have a monovortex, and the other cobalt nickel is a three vortex. So, but it, I would like to underline it is possible to quantify the magnetic moment uh, um, orientations not only along the length of the of the nanowire, but also in the radial direction. So you see here in this uh, figure, depending on the distance to the axis of, of the nanowire, we can determine which is the, the, the orientation of the magnetization, the magnetic moment. Okay. Uh, okay, this is the, the second type of modulation in nanowires. So this is uh, iron cobalt copper. The iron cobalt is, is cubic. It has a, a cubic uh, lattice, and this non, this non -wise was designed in a way that the the well the thickness of the copper layer is always constant to 25 nanometers, but the length of the magnetic segments was small in one end of the nanowire, around 200 nanometers, and the length of of this magnetic segment increased until the the very end, the other end where the, the length of these segments was around 600 nanometers. So the, the length of these individual magnetic segments increased. You see, this is a, a magnetic force image in the remanence. And then we proceeded with the synchrotron measurements again. And you see, under a magnetic field of minus 700 ested, you see here the, the white contrast it indicates that it is practically saturated in one direction. Then we remove the applied field and we apply a positive field. 
an increase in positive field and the magnetization reverses in a discontinuous way, stops in, 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 the, in, in this uh, local position of the, of the copper. See? But interestingly, this reversal process uh, starts in the end where we have uh, smaller uh, segments or magnetic segments. Okay, then if we pro uh, proceed in a similar way, but starting with the opposite saturation, the contrast is, is black, we remove the field and we apply the negative field. We observe that again, re magnetization reverses in a stepped way, but also uh, starting from the segments, the magnetic segments we have shorter length. Then it is possible to to reconstruct the hysteresis loop for this nanowire, as you see here, with a number of jumps. And, and what is in, in interesting, uh, and I want to emphasize, is that the reversal starts always in the in this end with smaller segments. So we observe what we have called magnetization ratchet, because the reversal proceeds always from the left to the right. This is interesting for some applications like in, in racetrack memory, although it is still far from the uh, direct application. So the interpretation of this magnetization ratchet has been done by macromagnetic simulations. So you see, this is a, a small video with reversal of magnetization according to the micromagnetic simulations. So it, it starts in this end with shorter segments and propagate this to the right, irrespective of which is the direction of the applied field. So the, the origin, to simplify, the origin of this uh, magnetization ratchet, it is related to the to the magnetostatic energy. First, if you see this uh, in one end, when we have shorter uh, segments, then the magnetizing field is larger. So it is reasonable to think that in these uh, smaller segments, we have larger the magnetizing field, so we need a smaller field to remagnetize in the opposite direction. And this reversal of magnetization propagates in, in through the magnetostatic interactions along the, along the, along the nanowire. Then we have uh, this magnetization ratchet. In fact, the, the, the ratchet effect is classical effect, particularly in, 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 mechanical, uh, in mechanics. So you see this wheel can rotate always in, in the same direction. In our case, the reversal of magnetization proceeds always from the left to the right. Okay, so, uh, so two, three minutes. So maybe I'm going to to skip some. So uh, I prefer if you want to ask me. So some uh, very recent data about the the effect of a current to the nanowire. Uh, we have measured it very rapidly. I summarize. We have been able to measure the magneto resistance uh, effect in these magnetic non-magnetic multi-layer nanowire, you see the, the, the magneto resistance as a function of the applied field. We observe some, of course, large change, but also it is a step indicating that the reversal take place in, in not in a single jump, but in, in a number of uh, jumps. Also, yeah, I will leave this for the questions if you like. So <clears throat> this is the, we applied a pulse of, of current and and we try to to observe we observe in fact which is the change in the in the magnetic domains after the application of of a of a electrical current and this was uh, performed in experimentally in nickel nanowires nickel is is, is cubic and isotropy and the very last uh, even this is micromagnetic simulations which is the this case is is a uh, for permaloid nanowires with no anisotropy, crystalline or magnetoelastic, uh, this is micromagnetic simulations indicating that the current by itself does not reverse magnetization. We need a small uh, magnetic field to provoke the, the, the reversal of magnetization. Anyway, if you are interested, we can talk later. Uh, I would like to go to this image. This is a, a photo of the group just before the COVID. It, later, it's more difficult to, 
to make a photo with all the people because some of them stay at home with teleworking and so on. But I would like to mention, this is only related to the last five uh, to eight years working with individual nanowires. Uh, Christina Brand has been responsible for all the fabrication of these modulated nanowires, as well as the mm, synchrotron measurements. Uh, uh, Agustina Senjo has been responsible for all the magnetic force microscopy imaging in the laboratory, which uh, she is really very expert. Uh, Rafael Pérez del Real, he is, has been working in, in sensing applications and uh, magnetic care effect and so on. And, and Oksana Chubukalo Fesenko, uh, you, you, know, you know him, is, is, uh, has, is responsible for all these macromagnetic simulations in, in all types of, of nanowires. And with this, I, I would like to, to finish. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Now that has been for this session, we proceed. One of the slides we have shown uh, uh, MFM. I mean, we were able to trace the, the magnetic resistance. So, if I do for example, the same experiment, uh, say 10 times, 15 times, will I be able to get the, the same location? In, for example, um, so yeah. you, you mean in the array of with many nanowires? Yeah. Or? Yeah. yeah, okay. So um, here at certain field, a certain nanowires which are right. So correct. If I do the, the same experiment 10 times, yeah. will I be able to get the uh, the switching of okay, okay. So uh, I would say we have not done this particular experiment, but I guess my feeling is that the the the, fight, the the whole response will be the same. Although I would not uh, be so sure that each individual nanowire reverses uh, in the same. Po so maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe one wire reverses because you you have to see that. Each nanowire is uh, submitted to the applied magnetic field plus the the local field of the surroundings. So, uh, although we have not made this experiment, but I guess that the, probably this individual nanowire in the next uh, trial maybe is not reversing under the same uh, applied field because uh, uh, you see here uh, we. In that time, with the, the maximum applied field with the magnetic force microscope was not large enough to saturate. We, I would expect the same, exactly the same behavior if we are able to go to full saturation. I have one question on the So why does it show in this sequence? In, in manganese, uh, manganese. This, yeah, it is related to the very particular uh, magnetic anisotropy of this manganese bismuth. So that it is uh, unusual to increase with temperature, but of course increases, get a maximum and then decreases. So normally, in most common material, so uh, anisotropy and coercivity from a larger largest value at, let's say, zero Kelvin, goes continuously decreasing. But in 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 some particular cases, the 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 aniso internal anisotropy, crystalline anisotropy, uh, uh, co consists of components from two or three different components depending on the phases. So in some particular case, could occur that you have an increase and then finally a decrease, of course. And this is related to the uh, anisotropy of these uh, alloys. The composition of iron varying from five to six will change the magnetic. Ah, yeah. 
So how do you ensure that the composition is from all the well, well, yeah, you you are right because it's a, a, a oh sorry, oh excuse me, let me go back. Yeah, uh, you're right that the to be sure that the composition is homogeneous, is is uh, is is not uh, conventional. Uh, sorry, Ian was. Yeah, this one I think, right? Yeah, okay. But uh, we are uh, we are sure that changing very very little the, the nominal comp. I would call it nominal composition because you are right that maybe in one region is slightly different. But you see here the the uh, this uh, magnetostriction constant, the, this relative change of length was um, experimentally measured in a piece of, of microwaves, roughly 30, mic, 30 centimeter long. So this is an average. So I would say this is an average value. And uh, I, I would agree with you that, are we sure that the, in each position, the composition is exactly the same? I am not sure. So because it's so so little the, the change in composition, the nominal change of composition that we 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 would follow in your comment, I would say this is average uh, average magnetostriction because it's really very long. This is well more than 30, 40, 40 centimeters or so required for the experiment. No, it's uh, uh, along the length. I don't, uh, you mean in composition or in diameter? No, in diameter is clear. In composition. Right. So, so, Yeah, well, this is, I, 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 I think I understand the question. How we prepare these nanowires having different compositions? So it is, uh, well, I didn't pay so much attention in the fabrication process, but it is changing the, the parameters of the electro deposition. So once we have the, the nanopoles with a constant diameter along the length, we, we start with the depo electro deposition making use of different uh, electrolytical paths with different compositions. So we are sure that first we are depositing cobalt nickel, for example, and the next is pure nickel, cobalt nickel. And so it's a multi-step electrodeposition. So it is this, uh, this is changing the parameters of electrodeposition. Uh, sometimes it's more difficult to control properly the modification, the the modulations in diameter for to obtain these nanowires with modulations in diameter it is in the previous uh, um, formation of the nanopores the nanopores in that case are not homogeneous in diameter but we have to anodize with different also uh, electro electrochemical parameters to produce first one one step one uh, diameter of sample 100 nanometers. Then stop the, the anodization process and we start with another parameter going to 120 nanometers, for example, and so on. And once we have the, the nanopores with the modulations in diameter, when we fill the, the, these pores by electrodeposition, the nanowires follow the, the, the geometry of the nanopores. Oh, please inform the casing. Uh, yes. The, the no, no, it is not Pyrex. No, 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 no. That no, it <laughs> was a different. Yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe. 
So there, there is another family of means of the beginning. So, so it is a, a schematic view, very simple. So this is for to obtain nanowires with homogeneous diameter and, and composition in this particular case. So we start with an aluminum foil with two anodization processes, actually oxidation of the aluminum. So the, the oxidation is not a, a planar front, but we have some points where it starts the oxidation. And in the second process, the, grow the, the nanopore, okay? And, and then to obtain these uh, uh, modulations in diameter, we have to follow a, a more specific uh, process. Last question. So, the basic question is: uh, What is the effect of the, the diameter of the nanowires? Like, how do you decide the diameter of the? So, uh, we decided the diameter of the nanowires as much as possible because, uh, for example, we would like, first of all, we we like to have um, a, a segments of diameter, for example, one hundred. 40 nanometers and the other 40 nanometers. But this is very difficult. And when we try to isolate them from the membrane, they break. So because of the different diameter. So we have to be careful. So we cannot prepare very, very different diameters for the large and the small uh, diameter segment. Uh, but the effect is that, uh, as I mentioned, when we have two subsequent uh, segments with different diameter in the transition region we have magnetic charges so and the, the reversal of magnetism is stop and then we need a, a larger field so this is why is one of the ways to obtain the, this step propagation of the reversal so the effect of this modulation in diameter is to provoke these steps in the reversal Thank you. Thank you. So there will be two more sessions after, and there will be one more session with two talks after after never but it will be virtual. So we cannot go back to work. So we change at the three thirty access. We will be again, but it will be virtual. So you can attend via. Thank you.